this next part I'm going to be going through building KDE, what used to be known as the K desktop environment. Um, it's probably the most heavyweight of all of the desktop environments, although the um, chapter here looks quite light on the number of packages to install. Um, there are many more uh, that are not listed in the Beyond Linux from Scratch book. There's probably, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 more packages, I guess. Um, it's where, Whereas GNOME was lots of tiny little libraries and fairly small packages to build together, KDE is heavier, not only the number of um, applications that they, they um, maintain as part of the KDE um, project, but also in the requirements in terms of uh, back-end libraries and so on. For example, it relies on Qt, which is quite a, a big toolkit. Um, it's probably, in terms of how long it takes to build, probably a lot longer than GTK takes to build. Um, uh, for that reason, I suppose it has got a bit of a reputation of being a bit bit heavyweight but it's also got a reputation for being almost infinitely configurable there's just about well the, the interface itself is very configurable and um, each individual application that comes with it a lot of them have got uh, many configuration options so it can get a bit daunting actually but it's also good if you're quite finicky about having things done a certain way or appearing a certain way that you've got all these different options to to tweak and adjust um, the environment as as much as you want and at the end of the day open source is what it's all about is doing things your own way that's what the Linux from scratch tagline is it's your distro your rules so I guess that sort of ethos of KDE is about having that configurability um, continues that um, in the same sort of theme. So yes, it can be a bit heavier weight. It probably takes up a lot more disk space as well. I'm, I'm, I don't know for certain, but it's just conjecture of what I've seen yesterday rebuilding GNOME after a long time. It's only used, I think we went from 16 gig. Uh, what have we got now? 14 gig. So uh, obviously we've got the source files in that space as well, but say that's two gigabytes so maybe half of it is the binaries um, so it's it's not not that much space I, I would almost expect um, that installing KDE we would easily do two gig to include the sources and, and remember as I said there's still not um, all the packages listed in the BLFS book there's only a selection here in fact this link here takes you to a page um, yeah this link here that lists okay these are duplicated because there's a, a signature file associated associated with each one so what you see here is only half the number but you can see there's in fact there's probably more than 50 extra ones there's probably you know 60 or 70 possibly but you can see there's loads of files a lot of them are games actually um, so I'll probably pick one or two out to build as examples. They do give um, a little bit of information about how to build them. It says most of these packages build with this set of instructions, but if you want to know about other switches and so on or dependencies, you can run this command. So we'll be going through a couple and having a go, see if we can get a couple installed. Um, hope I'm not too unlucky and pick one that needs loads of dependencies, but we'll see when we get to that part. So it's similar to GNOME, the installation, in that there's some libraries to build first um, and then the actual package. But it's different in that, uh, yes, we've got the libraries here that are built in the uh, introduction to KDE part. Then there's this KDE frameworks, which is what the applications use. Um, it's like a toolkit, if you like, that the applications can use. And then finally there's Plasma 5, which is the actual interface itself. So it's it's similar but different as well, if that makes sense. Whereas GNOME was more about the libraries and then runtime requirements and then some applications. Uh, you could summarize this as being the libraries 
the frameworks for the applications, then the applications and applications, um, and then finally the actual interface, the actual desktop environment itself. So let's fire on. Um, in terms of how long this will take to build, I'm not sure. Probably longer because of the fact that um, the the programs tend to be bigger, but um, it shouldn't be too much longer, I hope. Um, I'm just going to see on my list of rebuilds because it was something to do with. Oh yes, one of them was Falcon to rebuild after KDE, and the other two were to build after Plasma. I mean, I guess you could say KDE is effectively Plasma. So when when we've done KDE, I'll, I'll complete the rebuild list. I installed in the last three. Um, packages which are Mesa, Falcon and Polkit. So um, let's fire on with building KDE then. Um, I've said KDE is the one I've always used. I've tried GNOME years and years ago and didn't really get on with it. Um, I don't know if that's because I came from a Windows background initially and KDE was more like Windows um, at the time, I guess it still is in a certain way. Uh, seeing this gnome for the first time in, in let's say 10, 15 years, the layout and the look of it reminds me a little bit of Apple Mac. Um, so maybe the gnome's gone for the the looks of the Mac rather than Windows, whereas KG still got its Windows-like roots, I suppose. Although I'm not saying that KD has copied Windows or used it as inspiration. Um, I don't know that, but it, it's got that appearance to me. Right, so let's move on. Um, so it says here's a comprehensive desktop environment with a huge number of allocations and a huge number of users. And it's based on the QC framework. So here it explains here, KD5 systems, two main blocks of libraries called Frameworks 5 or KO5 and a desktop environment called KD Plasma 5. Um, now this is important here actually, if you don't want to install the whole lot, it says most applications written by the KDE team only use the frameworks, you do not need the Plasma environment. So in theory, if I just go back one page, sorry two pages, in theory, um, once we've come to this point here, uh, can I highlight this? Yeah, once we've built that lot, we can build any of these applications and we should be able to run them in any other, any other desktop environment. That's what it's saying because these are just applications and not the KDE environment. They don't need the KDE environment. So, for example, we could build Arc, which is like an archive manager. And once we build that, it should run within this GNOME environment. We don't need KDE to run it. So that's what that's saying. Okay, so we start off with CMake Extra modules, which we've already installed. Um, there's no other dependency, dependencies here that indicate we would need to build anything else. So I'm just going to skip over this and move on to phone on. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to go to Sources, BLFS. I'm going to create a directory called KDE5 and move extra CMake modules into there and do the same as I've already done with these other larger packages and keep everything together. So move on to Phonon now. The first library which is all to do with um, well it says multimedia, I thought it was to do with sound but it's, it says multimedia so um, Let's fetch this package first. So go back to BLFS and let's find the KDE5 folder. And we need at least one of phone and backend streamer or phone and backend VLC. Needs to be installed afterwards. So I'll install both of them because what it means is that we'll have both these backends available in KDE once we've got VLC installed. 
Um, we've already got G-Stream, I'm not sure if we've got VLC or not. Um, right, so it looks like these actually come up. Oh yes, they come up directly after phone on anyway, so I won't even bother leaving them as tabs. Okay, so let's extract this first library. There's no extra options, so let's begin building it. Okay, so that's built and we can install it. So that's that first one complete. Phone on. And we'll move on to build phone on backend streamer. So this has got requirements, so we've nearly installed all the GST plugins, the only one outstanding is this ugly one, um, which is for, as it says, MP3 support. So let's open that new tab and get this one installed. So there's no other dependencies. So let's save this. And I'll move that into the parent directory. And install this. Let's say, oh, I was about this subjective C compiler installed again, so we can ignore that. Again, if you need a plugin for a given dependency, that dependency needs to exist. Well, so we've already got the, everything there. There's no other options, so just do a simple copy and paste. So let's do a ninja test. It's OK. And install it. All done. So that was in 42 GST plugins ugly. So now we can build the phone on back end for G Streamer. extra options, just an explanation about what the release option is about, the build type. And install it. So that's done. So that was the back end for G Streamer. Um, it did say we need one of the G Streamer VLC, but there's no harm in building the VLC one as well. So let's do that. Um, yeah, I didn't think we'd installed VLC, so let's have a look at that one. So that's got lots of dependencies, but as you can see, because we've done so much work already building libraries, it doesn't look like there's anything to build. Yeah, looks like uh, 
under VA actually, let me check that. Alright, if it's part of Xorg. VA, yes we have, okay. I live from config. Yep. So loads of dependencies here, optional dependencies for different aspects of VLC and as you can see by the highlighting of all the links, we've got everything installed so it's saved a great deal of time. So let's save this link. and move that into the parent directory. Extract it. And we've got some extra options here. So let's CD into it. Let's do the sets first of all. Also to fix some issues with the build. And let's see what this says here. Disable OpenCV. It's not compatible with this version of VLC. Disable VPX. That's not compatible. So let's copy that. We need that obviously. Disable Lure if you haven't got it installed. Disable MAD if you haven't got LibMAD installed. Is that one of the ones with. Built. Oh yes it is, okay. Maybe codec. So it even suggests to run configure help for complete list, so let's quickly do that. I think this is quite a long list as I remember. Yep, there's lots there to to set. So I think the best thing to do is probably to run the configure. Um, I think it produces a summary. Hopefully it does. And if there's anything we spot there that we think is missing, we can try and maybe turn that on, turn that switch on. No, it hasn't done. So it says to type make or dot forward slash compile if you like nice colours. Let's have a look and see what that actually is. So it is a, a little script that's got make embedded into it. So let's try and run that out of interest. Okay, so it's just putting colours in where the warnings is uh, appearing, where the warnings are appearing, so not that big a deal really. I guess if you're looking for a warning or an error, it would make it easier to spot, and hopefully we won't get that.
Okay, that's compiled. So let's run the tests now. And that's completed. So let's install it with this command here. We've got an error there. Um, can't see what failed there. Um, I'm going to run that again, but minus J1 in see if that makes a difference Relink the video power. Right, it could be we need to do this remove LA file. Some malarkey, so let's run that. And try the install again. Okay. Um so we'll find this error again. Really include VD power to buff command before installing it. That might be a problem there. Cannot find, so can't find some X libraries again. Right. Um, so, how did I come? Come this route it could be, yeah, that's probably why. Um, because the XORG library paths aren't available when I do um, 
Yes, you like that. Oh, so they are. Okay. Is it the path that's not complete then? Yeah, that's that's probably what it is. So what I need to do is to come out and just sudo and run this make command and I should fix it. I think I should have done sudo minus a come to think of it. Um, but we'll see how this goes. better so it was the environment that um, root hasn't got by default but they set up for ordinary users so that's what was causing the installation problem <clears throat> so now I'm going to update these icon caches in the uh, MIME database so that's done so that should be VLC complete in fact it should be available in here and there it is so um, yeah I'm not going to look for files now but uh, it's it's installed that's just to help them out so 3.08 3.08 that's fine So that's VLC installed. <clears throat> Chapter 44. Okay, now we can do the phone end, back end, phone and back end. So save this. And again, no extra options, just configure and make. <coughs> and install it. That's done. Phone on back end VLC. Next we've got Polkit for QT. So again we've got all the dependencies. Again, straightforward configure and make. And install. And that's done. And next got libdbus menu QT. 
again we've got the dependencies Okay, so the um, source tarball's got dash qt underscore the version number, but the extracted folder's got dash qt hyphen. That's a bit crafty. So we can put this in and change this option to on, as we've got the doxygen tool installed. Let's put that in. and build it and now we can install it and that's done So that's all the libraries we need.